Hi everyone, welcome back. So in the previous video, we concluded the shape of the earth and the shape of the earth is somewhat spherical. We'll call it as oblate spheroid. Now, moving on to the next topic, the topic is proofs of the earth shape. That means what are the proofs that we have to suggest that the shape of the earth is spherical. At present, sitting in front of a mobile phone or a computer, we have a lot of proofs that too in front of our hand that we have mobile phones, internet, or we can say we have technology. We have satellites which can take the photo of the earth from outer space. So that, that is the most advanced technology we have. But uh, before that, we had so many other ideas which helped us to conclude that the shape of the earth was spherical. We'll go through all these one by one. Now, these are the uh, essential uh, proofs that says the shape of the earth is spherical. First one is the shape of other celestial bodies. Second one is circumnavigation of the earth, then line of visibility and so on. So we'll discuss all these points one by one. Now the first one is, of course, the shape of other celestial bodies. All other celestial bodies which we can see from the earth, like sun, moon and other planets, appears to be circular. That means they are spherical in shape. Since we are part of the same solar system, we can assume that or in the in earlier times scientists came to the conclusion that earth would also be in the same shape so that was the one of the uh, first proof for the shape of the earth now the second one uh, in the previous session we have seen that Magellan uh, traveled around the earth and he came back to the same uh, place so that is the second proof people traveling around the earth reaches the same location it proves that earth is not flat it is spherical in shape simple one correct now the third one is the line of visibility with height uh, this can be best observed from uh, a flat area say for example ocean or a sea imagine you can see uh, two points a and b right both are on a ship b is slightly higher than a so the area that can be seen from the the location A is comparatively uh, smaller than that of the area that can be seen from B. That means uh, the line of visibility increases with height. It is possible uh, only if we are in a curved surface. Right? If it is in a flat surface, this won't be there. Whether you are standing at A or B, you will be able to see uh, the same area. Right? So. Line of visibility helps us to uh, again conclude that the shape of the earth is spherical. Now the next two point is horizon. Horizon means the total area that we can see, right? Or the area at our eye level, the line of sight is called as horizon. If you stand on the top of a tall building, imagine you are standing on the top of Burj Khalifa and if you are seeing around, right? Your horizon will be circular, right? If, if the earth was flat, it would have not happened. That means horizon also helps us to suggest that if the shape of the earth is not flat, it is spherical, right? Now, next, sunrise and sunset. sunset. Imagine if the earth is flat, right? Everywhere the time for sunset and sunrise would be the same because earth is flat. But at present condition, it is different at different places, right? Different places at the, at the different part of the world experience the sunset and sunrise at different time period. So that is because the spherical shape of the earth. Right. Another proof is uh, to uh, suggest that the shape of the earth is spherical is the surface is actually curved. Right. Say for example, uh, this also can be observed again best from a coastal area. Imagine you are standing in a coastal area or in a beach looking into the sea right and if a ship approaches you first you will see the top part of the ship maybe if there is a flag you will see the flag first after that as the ship comes a little more towards you you will start to see the pole of the flag then you will see the duck and finally you will see the entire ship that is because the surface is curved right so uh, same thing is shown in the picture also right a man is standing under the tower he won't be able to see the building on the other side right but if the man is standing on the top of the tower, he will be able to see the other side of the uh, sorry the building because the surface is curved but if the earth would have been uh, flat whether he stands on the top of the tower or at the bottom he will be able to see the uh, 
uh, this one building on the other side so this also suggests that earth shape is not flat it is spherical now another one is this one you just observe this this is nothing but a, a, a lunar eclipse right so you know how lunar eclipse occurs right when the sun moon and the earth comes in a line and the earth is in the middle earth's shadow is projected on moon here in this case you can see the uh, shape of the shadow it is slightly curved right so these are the uh, different phases of the lunar eclipse so this lunar eclipse also says that the shape of the earth is not flat it is either circular or spherical right it won't it is not circular that's clear which because we are here on the surface right so if it is spherical that is why the shape of the shadow is curved like this now the most techno advanced technology helps us to say the shape of that clearly that is the aerial photographs photograph is uh, taken from at a higher elevation so in this case we have two photographs one photograph is taken from the moon it clearly shows the shape of the earth as spherical and the one is a photo taken from the international space station right so these two photographs again suggest that the shape of the earth is spherical so these are the proofs which suggest that the shape of the earth is spherical i think it's a very easy topic and there won't be any doubt in this anyway if you have any doubt uh, you can uh, contact me through the whatsapp group okay now moving on to the next topic that is earth as a home to the humankind so earth is the only planet in the entire uni universe system universe not universe, sorry not universe system so it is the only planet in the entire universe known to have life as per our knowledge right so it's the fifth largest planet in the solar system and the third one from the sun let's see why we have a life only on earth we live only on earth just see we can see the factors that supports life on earth now there are so many factors one of the important factor is the availability of water on earth and before going to the factors which actually support the life on earth first we will see these few topics first one is about water or water on earth surface so this next two three slides will show a few information about distribution of land and water on earth now if you take the surface of the earth 71 percent of the surface of the surface of the earth is covered with water that is almost two-third and the remaining 29 percent is on the land not only that it has got some facts some out, outstanding facts first one the distribution of water is uneven if you uh, if you want to more uh, more clarification on this see the next point the northern hemisphere has nearly equal areas of land and water right you see any world map right the northern hemisphere i'll show you again uh, the northern hemisphere have almost equal area of land and water whereas in the southern hemisphere water is nearly 15 times more than that of land area that means there is an uneven distribution of land and water now another one an interesting fact is this one there is an antipodal arrangement of land and water on directly opposite side of the earth that means uh, i'll explain you with another one uh, slide the beautiful slide or you can look into the map that is there in your page number 14 right antipodal arrangement means wherever you go on earth directly opposite to land there is water body right if i say uh, an example like if you dig here in your place right imagine you are digging down right and you are crossing the entire globe and reaching the other side right on the other side there will be water you will not reach land you will be reaching some ocean right i'll explain you that in the coming slides now i'm going to the next top uh, top point that is uh, most of the land area when we compare with the distribution of land and water most of the land area is found in the northern hemisphere and in the land landmass in the southern hemisphere are comparatively very less and they are narrow not only that if you see the uh, landmass in the southern hemisphere like uh, here you can see south america africa right oh, and australia all these have a po protruding point pointing downward right so the tip of the landmass is uh, pointing southward not only that same case is there from antarctica also the tip of all these three continents have 
another uh, projection directly coming in from the opposite side from the Antarctica. That is another important interesting feature of, feature of distribution of land. Now, if from this map, we can see the equator which is shown in blue color. Now, if we see the northern hemisphere almost, there is equal distribution of land and compared to the southern hemisphere, the land area is comparatively very less and area under water is almost 15 times which we cannot say correctly from the map but that is the reality right now this is what i told the antipodal antipodal arrangement of land and water actually this is these are two world maps the blue world map is the normal one which normal one which we use and the yellow one is the world map which shows the place directly opposite to each and every place on earth say for example if you see the uh, indian landmass here or you leave india you can see the australia there right it is also there in the yellow color right if you see australia it is actually opposite to the atlantic ocean right or see the left hand side of the map you can see africa inverted africa right so africa is located exactly opposite to pacific ocean or if you see the northern part and southern part of the world that is antarctica and arctic ocean right antarctica is a landmass land which is directly opposite to the uh, arctic ocean right Similarly, if you see India also, India is also coming in the same manner, opposite India, they have, we have uh, Pacific Ocean, right? Or if you see uh, North America, North America comes exactly opposite to that of Indian Ocean. So, there is this kind of an arrangement of land and water opposite to each other. This is what is called as antipodal arrangement, except in few places, in the, uh, in the rest of the area, it is like this only wherever there is a land opposite land there is water body this is what is called as the antipodal arrangement of land and water on opposite side i think it's clear now it's the same thing it's the same thing showing right now why is it possible one thing is this one most of the land area sorry surface area is covered with water if you see the peak in the middle right the middle one that shows almost half of the earth or half of the entire surface area is covered with pacific ocean so we have such huge oceans right and the landmass is almost concentrated to one side so because of all these things we have an antipodal arrangement of land and water on earth right and now so one of the most important thing that supports or that becomes a reason for the existence of life on earth is water and these are the features of distribution of water, right? Uneven distribution, then antipodal arrangement of land and water, right? Now, moving on to the next topic, the another important thing that supports or that becomes a reason for the existence of life is the presence of biosphere or biosphere is the life supporting sphere. It actually spreads over all other three spheres, namely atmosphere, hydrosphere and lithosphere. This term was first used by an Austrian geologist. It, his name was Edward Seuss. So according to him, biosphere is a sphere of life organisms, sorry, living organism or biological process lying at, at the interface between atmosphere, lithosphere and hydrosphere. And that is exactly the meaning of biosphere, right? It's a sphere spreading over all the three spheres where life exists. And biosphere supplies essential requisite for, requisites for uh, life on earth like light, heat, water, food, and habitat. All these things are supported by, uh, so uh, supplies supplied by biosphere. Biosphere sometimes also is called as ecosystem, and this is an evolution, evolutionary system. It develops slowly, and it has came to the present position. Now there is another term to study: environment. All of you are familiar with the term, but all living and non-living things are invisibly interlinked in a system and that system is called as environment. So since everything is interlinked, it is necessary to maintain a balance among all the different cycles, right? There are mainly these five cycles, right? So these five cycles helps in existence of life. These are energy cycle, heat cycle, carbon cycle, nitrogen cycle and water cycle. And the environment depends on all these cycles. Right. If these cycles won't work properly, then there won't be environment and there will not be any life on earth. Or it will be difficult for the life to sustain on earth without proper maintenance of these cycles. Now let's see what these are. Now, so uh, one of the important topic in this one is solar energy. Solar energy is actually the energy received from the sun. 
Sun's energy reaches Earth in the form of heat as well as light, and this energy is transferred into molecules. And the process of transfer of energy is called as photochemical process. And this energy is essential for photosynthesis. You know what process photosynthesis? It is the process by which plants makes food. And through this process, plants absorb carbon dioxide and they gives out oxygen. Right? So plants are necessary for sorry, carbon dioxide is necessary for oxygen. Sorry, uh, plants and the oxygen is necessary for uh, animals like human beings. So, solar energy is essential for the these cycles. Right now, let's see the cycles. First one is nitrogen cycle. We know that seventy-one percent of the gases in the atmosphere is actually nitrogen. Nitrogen is, is essential for the growth of plants and it moves in a cyclic manner. Right. From the atmosphere, it reaches the plants, then soil, again it goes back to the atmosphere. This process is called as nitrogen cycle, right? Nitrogen in the atmosphere is absorbed by soil and plants, right? Then later, after the decomposition of these things, right, plants, bacteria decompose the plants. Once it's dead, the, atmo uh, the uh, nitrogen is again gone back to the atmosphere. So this is a cyclic process. So this cyclic movement of nitrogen is called as nitrogen cycle, right? Now. Second one is the heat cycle. It's very simple. Heat is again another acute thing, right? So the entire heat received on Earth can be taken as hundred percentage. Hundred percentage of heat reaches Earth, right? But a little, very little amount of heat is used by living and non-living things. And end of the day, the entire hundred percent heat is returned back, right? All this hundred percentage will not reach the surface of the Earth, right? On its way. Atmosphere itself reflects uh, about two percent of the heat, six percent of the heat. Around twenty percent is reflected from the clouds. Right, four percent is reflected back from the Earth's surface. Some nineteen percent is absorbed by the atmosphere and clouds. The remaining fifty-one percent is actually reaching the surface, which is used by the living things and non-living things in the surface. Right, but again, this will also go back to the atmosphere. Again, next day, another set of solar radiation reaches. So. This is again a cyclic process. Heat is coming, it is used, and it is given back. So this cyclic process of transfer of heat is called as heat cycle, right? So this is one of the simplest form, right? We don't need to study anything uh, in detail. So this basic thing is enough. So you can uh, post the video and you can uh, note it down. Now, the next cycle is oxygen cycle. Oxygen is essential for the uh, animals and uh, human beings, right? So we inhale oxygen and exhale carbon dioxide. On the other hand, plants inhale carbon dioxide and exhale oxygen. So again, there's a cycle, right? From the atmosphere, it is coming to the animals, right? From animals, carbon dioxide is going out. It is absorbed by plants. Again, it's moving back to the atmosphere. Through, process, uh, through the process of photosynthesis, from plants, oxygen is going into the atmosphere. Again, it is absorbed by the animals. So this is a cyclic process. So this movement of oxygen is called as oxygen cycle. And the last one is water cycle is also called as hydrologic cycle. You are all familiar with this thing. You are studying this from maybe first standard itself. This is the movement of water through all the three spheres, right? From hydrosphere, that is from water bodies. It is going to the atmosphere. Then after reaching certain height, it condenses, forms clouds and gives rain. Again, it comes back to the land area or to the water body and again it goes back. So the cyclic process of the cyclic movement of water through all spaces, spheres are called as water cycle or hydrogen cycle. So all these cycles are essential for the existence of life. Now let's see what are the main factors that helps in the existence of life on earth. There are so many factors, but the three important factors, the most important factors are these. First one is the perfect distance from the sun, right? Earth has an elliptic orbit it's not exactly circle right earth is not uh, re revolving around the sun in an exact circle but in an elliptic circle where the distance is maximum distance is around 152 million kilometer and minimum distance is around 147 million kilometer that means this is the distance of earth from sun right second important is the presence of a thick atmosphere with gases like oxygen nitrogen co2 ozone etc and the third one is the availability of water and the water cycle on earth now you'll see all this one by one so first one as i said it is the perfect distance from the sun 
earth is located neither too far nor too near to the sun therefore we are re uh, receiving sufficient amount of heat right we are uh, located somewhere between 147 and 152 million kilometers and that is the perfect distance therefore the amount of heat received on the earth is perfect it is neither too high or too less in case of other planets like venus and mercury they are receiving more heat whereas mars jupiter etc which are located far away from the sun is receiving a mighty very really less heat so if you go to jupiter saturn etc there the temperatures are always uh, below zero degree and if you go to venus and mercury it will always be above maybe some 50 60 70 degrees celsius but luckily we are in the right location so that is one of the most important thing that supports or that helps in the existence of life that is the distance from the sun which is not too far not too near now second important point is or second important factor that support life on earth is the presence of a very thick atmosphere a atmos atmosphere which is somewhat 1600 kilometer thick right that's not only really thick it does not have any harmful gases right if you go to any uh, no, no, it is not possible so if you take the case of other planets like jupiter etc there are so many harmful gas toxic gases in the atmosphere but luckily on earth we don't have any kind of toxic gases and we have a good percentage of oxygen 71 percent of oxygen which is essential for life and 78 percentage of nitrogen that is helpful for growth of plants as well as agriculture and not only that the presence of ozone ozone layer there is a layer in the atmosphere right you have studied eight standard right which is located somewhere around 30 40 kilometers an area with which has high concentration of ozone it prevents the ultraviolet radiations from entering into the earth atmosphere and keep the earth surface safe from uv radiations right not only that we have water vapor in the atmosphere it helps in maintaining the uh, heat of the atmosphere so this thick atmosphere with all these factors are the second important thing that support life on earth and third important factor is the water and the water cycle we have already seen what water cycle is and we have some 70 percent of the entire earth surface covered with water and this is the third important factor that support life on earth to summarize we can say the earth's location in the solar system it as atmosphere it's atmosphere containing oxygen and the water cycle have made life possible to exist on earth right so this is the end of the lesson and we'll discuss all other things in the what's what's approved Thank you.